Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on your YouTube channel. This platform is yours to take advantage of, to take your English to the next level and sound like native speakers. What I have brought you in today's video is 20 English phrases and idioms that if you know or learn how to use, your business English is fantastic. Are you ready for today's video? Of course you are, which is why you're here watching this video. But before we continue with the rest of today's video, I kindly want you to like this video in support of my YouTube channel and its growth. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so yet and turn on the notification bell not to miss any of my future videos. All right, let's start discussing the 20 English idioms and phrases that if you know your English, your business English is fantastic. The phrase number one, to make it your business to do something. To make it your business to do something. Have you ever seen this idiom before? I don't think you have, which is why I'm trying to teach it to you, to learn how to use it, because you may not have seen this before, but it's something which is commonly used by native speakers. So what does this idiom mean? To make it your business to do something. When you make it your business to do something, you make a special effort to do something, or you put a special effort into doing something or making something happen. Let me provide you with two examples. Our managers should make it their business to expand their company. Our managers should make it their business to expand their company, which means our managers need to make a special effort to expand our company. Our managers need to put more effort or special effort into expanding our company and letting it grow. The example number two. If you want to succeed, you should make it your business to find more customers. If you want to succeed, you should make it your business to find more customers, which means if you want to meet with success or if you want to succeed, you really need to make a special effort to find more customers or put a special effort into finding more customers. The more customers, the more money. So if you want to make more money and succeed, you really need to make a special effort to find more customers. So to make it your business to do something. The phrase number two, to mean business. This phrase that you can see here, to mean business. What does it mean? What does it mean when we say that someone means business? When you mean business or when someone means business, it means someone is very serious and determined about what they want to do. So when you see someone who's really serious and determined about what they want to do, you can say they mean business. Two examples. When our managers set the company a new goal, they mean business. When our managers set the company a new goal, they mean business, which means when our managers set the company a new goal, they're very serious and determined about reaching that goal or about, you know, doing whatever it is that they want to do. The other example, every successful businessman needs to mean business. Every successful businessman needs to mean business. Every successful businessman needs to mean business, which means every successful businessman must be very serious and determined about what they want to do or whatever it is that they want to do or about reaching their goals or moving towards their goals or working towards their goals. So when you set yourself a goal and you want to reach it or work towards it, you really need to mean business. You really need to be serious and determined about reaching your goal or working towards it. So to mean business. Let's move on to the third phrase that if you know your business English is fantastic, which is to turn the tables on someone. 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 What does it mean to turn the tables on someone? Have you ever seen this idiom before? What does it mean? Where do we use it? When you turn the tables on someone, you do something that works to the advantage of you and to the disadvantage of others. Or you try to take some steps towards doing things in favor of yourself and against others. Or you do things that work to the advantage of you and to the disadvantage of others. So by Turning the tables on people or on someone, you're actually doing things that work to the advantage of you, but at the same time are putting other people 
or someone else at a disadvantage. So to turn the tables on someone, two examples. One reason he's a successful businessman is he knows how to turn the tables on his rivals. One reason he's a successful businessman is he knows how to turn the tables on his rivals, which means the reason why he's a successful businessman is he knows how to do things that work to the advantage of himself and to the disadvantage of others, or he knows how to do things in favor of himself and against his rivals, or he knows how to do things that work to the advantage of himself but put his rivals at a disadvantage. The second example, he turned the tables on his business partners and made them lose lots of money. He turned the tables on his business partners and made them lose lots of money. He turned the tables on his business partners and made them lose lots of money, which means he did something that worked to the disadvantage of his business partners and to the advantage of himself and made his business partners lose a lot of money. All right, let's move on to the next English phrase that if you know your business English is wonderful, which is to sit on the fence. To sit on the fence. To sit on the fence. What does it mean? What do we mean by saying that someone sits on the fence? When someone sits on the fence, what we mean is that they're not expressing their opinion on a particular subject directly, or they don't actually say who they're supporting, or whose side they're taking, or whose side they are on. So, to sit on the fence means to avoid expressing your opinion on a certain or particular subject, and also to avoid saying whose side you're taking, or on whose side you are, or who you're supporting. Two examples. You can't sit on the fence all the time. You should clearly show who you're supporting. You can't sit on the fence all the time. You should clearly show who you're supporting. You can't sit on the fence all the time. You should clearly show who you're supporting, which means you cannot keep, you know, hiding your opinions on a certain subject and you cannot, you know, avoid saying who you're supporting or whose side you're taking. You should clearly say who you're supporting or whose side you're taking or what your opinion on someone is or on something is. The second example. We don't really know what his ideas are as he always sits on the fence. We don't really know what his ideas are as he always sits on the fence. We don't really know what his ideas are as he always sits on the fence, which means we don't really know what his opinion on a certain subject is or who he is supporting or whose side is taken as he always sits on the fence. All right, let's move on to the next English phrase that if you know your business English is fantastic, which is this one, not being the business of doing something, not being the business of doing something, not be in the business of doing something. For example, I am not in the business of doing something. You are not in the business of doing something. She is not in the business of doing something. But what, what does it mean when we say someone is not in the business of doing something? When we say someone is not in the business of doing something, it means someone does not have the intention of doing something or is not interested in doing something. Why? Because they think it's not a good idea or it's not the right thing to do. Two examples. As a committed manager, I'm not in the business of lying to my employees. As a committed manager, I'm not in the business of lying to my employees. As a committed manager, I'm not in the business of lying to my employees. Which means, as a committed manager, I don't have the intention of lying to my employees because it's not the right thing to do, or I'm not interested in lying to my employees because it is not the right thing to do. The other example, I'm not in the business of doing dirty business. I'm not in the business of doing dirty business. I'm not in the business of doing dirty business, which means I'm not interested in doing dirty business or I don't have the intention of doing dirty business because it's not the right thing to do. It's not ethical or right to do dirty business. Now let's proceed to the next phrase that if you know your English, your business English is fantastic, which is to go about your business. 
to go about your business. To go about your business. What does it mean when we say you go about your business? So when you go about your business, you do what you normally do, or you do what you usually do. Two examples. She seems to be going about her business despite her terrible accident. She seems to be going about her business despite her terrible accident. She seems to be going about her business despite her terrible accident, which means despite the fact that she had a terrible accident, she seems to be doing what she normally does, or she seems to be, you know, doing what she usually does, or she seems to continue doing all the things that she normally does or usually does. The other example. People are going about their business, although it's snowing heavily. People are going about their business, although it's snowing heavily. People are going about their business, although it's snowing heavily. Which means, although it's snowing heavily, people are just doing what they normally or usually do, or people are continuing their normal life. All right, let's move on to the next English phrase. That if you know your business English is impeccable, which is to be a man or woman of your word. To be a man or woman of your word. To be a man or woman of your word. To be a man or woman of your word. What do you think this idiomatic expression means? To be a man or woman of your word. Do you have any idea what it means? Can you guess the meaning of this phrase? To be the man or woman of your word means to be the man or the woman that keeps their promises does not break their promises, or does their best to redeem their promises. Two examples. The reason why he's so successful is he's a man of his word. The reason why he's so successful is he's a man of his word, which means the reason why he's so successful is he always keeps his promises. He never breaks his promises. The other example. Betty is a woman of her word, which has made her a successful manager. Betty is a woman of her word, which has made her a successful manager. Betty is a woman of her word, which has made her a successful manager. Which means the reason why Betty has become a successful manager is she keeps her promises. She never breaks her promises. All right, let's move on to the next English phrase that if you know your business English is wonderful and terrific, which is this one. To do something like nobody's business. To do something like nobody's business. To do something like nobody's business. What does it mean when we say someone does something like nobody's business or you do something like nobody's business? When someone does something like nobody's business, they do something a lot, so much, pretty well, very well, and very fast or pretty quickly. Two examples. Trust him, he will fix your car like nobody's business. Trust him, he will fix your car like nobody's business. Trust him, he will fix your car like nobody's business. Which means you really need to trust him because he will fix your car pretty well and pretty quickly. The other example. On my YouTube channel, I teach you lovely students English like nobody's business. On my YouTube channel, I teach you lovely students English like nobody's business. Which means on my YouTube channel, I teach you guys English very well, pretty well, and pretty quickly. All right, the next English phrase that if you know your business English is fantastic is this one. To get down to business. To get down to business. But what does it mean? To get down to business means to deal with the most important part of something or to start doing or dealing with what needs to be done or the most important thing that needs to be done in a certain situation. Two examples. We've had a lot of meetings, but now we should get down to business and solve our problems. We've had a lot of meetings, but now we should get down to business and solve our problems. We've had a lot of meetings, but now we should get down to business and solve our problems. Which means, we've had a lot of conversations and a lot of meetings, but now we need to deal with the most important thing that we've got to do to solve our problems. The second example, as long as you don't get down to business, nothing will improve. As long as you don't get down to business, nothing will improve. Which means, as long as you don't start dealing with the main thing that needs to be dealt with or done, nothing will improve, nothing will change for the better.
All right, now let's move on to the next English phrase that if you know your business English is terrific, which is this one, the bottom line, the bottom line, the bottom line, the bottom line. What is the meaning of the bottom line? Do you have any idea? Uh, can you guess what the meaning of this idiom is, the bottom line? Well, actually, the bottom line refers to the most important facts in a certain situation. So, the most important facts in a certain situation. That's the meaning of the bottom line. Two examples. The bottom line is most of our problems come from the management side of our business. The bottom line is most of our problems come from the management side of our business. The bottom line is most of our problems come from the management side of our business, which means the most important fact now in our situation is that our problems come from the management side of our business or our problems are caused by the management part of our business. And that is the bottom line. That is the most important fact. The other example, you don't know how to run a business and that's the bottom line. You don't know how to run the business and that is the bottom line, which means the most important fact that everyone should know now or should come to attention is you don't know how to run the business. You don't know how to manage the business. You're not a good manager. That's the bottom line. All right, let's proceed to the next English phrase that if you, you, you know your business English is fantastic, which is this one. To put or set the wheels of something in motion. To set or put the wheels of something in motion. To put or set the wheels of something in motion means to do what is necessary or important in a situation to get a series of actions or events starting. Two examples. We need better policies to get the wheels of our economy in motion. Which means we need a series of actions to improve our economy or we need to do something that starts a series of actions that change the economy for the better. All right, the other example. Better strategies can set the wheels of this company in motion. Better strategies can set the wheels of this company in motion. Better strategies can set the wheels of this company in motion, which means better strategies can lead to a series of positive actions that can change this company for the better. All right, let's get to the next English phrase that if you guys know your business English is wonderful, which is this one. To take the long view of something. 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 When you take the long view of something, you take into account the future of something rather than its present or rather than what is happening now. So, to take the long view of something. Two examples. As the manager of a big company, you must take the long view of your decisions. As the manager of a big company, you must take the long view of your decisions. As the manager of a big company, you must take the long view of your decisions, which means as the manager of a big company, a significant company, you really need to take into account or consider the future of the decisions or the outcome of the decisions that you're making rather than their present or what is happening right now. The other example, your present success is a direct result of you taking the long view of your past decisions. Your present success, the success that you have right now, is a direct result of you taking the long view of your past decisions, which means your present success is a direct result of considering the future of your past decisions rather than, you know, the uh, present moment of your past decisions. So whatever happens in your life now is a direct result of your past decisions and also the thought that you gave to the future of your actions or the future of your decisions rather than their present. All right, guys, let's move on to the next English phrase that if you know your business English is indescribable and unspeakable, which is to put something back on the rails, 
to put something back on the rails. Can you guess the meaning of this English idiom? What do you think it means? Can you make a guess? Well, to put something back on the rails means to make something successful again, especially after a period of failure, not doing well or not working well, not operating well. So, to put something back on the rails. Two examples. A smart investments can put our company back on the rails. A smart investments can put our company back on the rails. A smart investments can put our company back on the rails, which means smart investments can make our company successful again, especially after a period of not doing well or not, you know, working well or after a period of failure. The other example, uploading better videos can put your YouTube channel back on the rails. Uploading better videos can put your YouTube channel back on the rails. Uploading better videos can put your YouTube channel back on the rails, which means if you upload better videos on your YouTube channel, you can make your channel successful again after a period of not doing pretty well or not working successfully or after a period of failure. All right, let's move on to the next English phrase, which is to throw caution to the wind. To throw caution to the wind. To throw caution to the wind. When you throw caution to the wind, you deliberately ignore the risks involved in something and behave in a way that might cause trouble or get yourself or gets other people into trouble. So, to throw caution to the wind. The first example, we don't need a manager that throws caution to the wind and doesn't consider the outcome of the wrong decisions. We don't need a manager that throws caution to the wind and does not consider the outcome of the wrong decisions. We don't need a manager that throws caution to the wind and does not consider the outcome of the wrong decisions. Which means we don't need a manager that ignores the risks involved in the decision that they want to make or in whatever it is that they want to do and behaves you know, in a way that might get themselves and also other people into trouble. The other example. Sometimes a good manager should throw caution to the wind and do anything possible in favor of the business. Sometimes a good manager should throw caution to the wind and do anything possible in favor of the business. Which means sometimes a good manager needs to ignore the risks involved in whatever it is that they want to do or in their decisions and just do all that they can, you know, even if they end up getting themselves into trouble in favor of the business. All right, let's proceed to the next English phrase that if you know your business English is awesome, which is this one, to reinvent the wheel, to reinvent the wheel, to reinvent the wheel means to waste so much of your time by trying to do what's been already done or by trying to invent what's been already invented. Let's focus on two examples. The thing with our company is our managers always reinvent the wheel. The thing with our company is our managers always reinvent the wheel, which means the problem with our company is our managers always try to waste so much of their time by doing what's been already done or by inventing what's been already invented. The other example. Sometimes excessive creativity leads to reinventing the wheel. Sometimes excessive creativity leads to reinventing the wheel. Which means sometimes excessive and undue creativity leads to doing what's been done before or inventing what's been already invented. All right, let's move on to the next English phrase that if you guys, if you lovely and fantastic English learners know, your business English is terrific, which is this one. To play your cards close to your chest. 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 When you play your cards close to your chest, you try to hide your intentions and you do not reveal what you really want to do and you do your best to behave secretively. So, when someone plays their cards close to their chest, 
they actually do their best to hide their intentions and they do not reveal what they really want to do next. They try to hide their next moves and they do their best to uh, behave as secretively as they can. So to play your cards close to your chest. Two examples. A successful business owner should play their cards close to their chest when competing with their rivals. Which means a successful business owner needs to hide their intentions and needs to do their best not to reveal their next moves and also uh, needs to do their best to behave as secretively as they can when it comes to competing with their rivals to catch their rivals by surprise or to shock them. The other example, you can't predict his next move as he always places cards close to his chest. You can't predict his next move as he always places cards close to his chest, which means as he always tries to hide his intentions and behave secretively. You don't really know what he wants to do next. You don't really know what his next move is. All right, getting to the next English phrase that if you language learners know, your business English is fantastic, which is this one. To put your cards on the table. To put your cards on the table. This English idiom is exactly opposite of the previous one that I just taught you. When you play your cards close to your chest, you hide your intentions and don't really reveal what you really want to do. But when you put your cards on the table, you express your intentions and you make it known to everyone that what you really want to do. You tell everyone that what you want to do and you try to behave honestly towards other people. So this is the meaning of putting your cards on the table. Two examples. Everyone understands him well as he always puts his cards on the table. Everyone understands him well as he always puts his cards on the table, which means everyone can deal with him pretty well because he's pretty clear about everything. You know, he expresses his feelings, his emotions, and you can easily understand him. So dealing with him is pretty easy, which is why everyone understands him. The other example, we can't compete with anyone because we put our cards on the table, but others don't. We can't compete with anyone because we put our cards on the table, but others don't. Which means we're not able to compete with anyone because we just express our feelings, our intentions, and we tell everyone that what we want to do, and we <clears throat> disclose all our intentions and everything that we want to do, but others don't, and others just play their cards close to their chests and hide their feelings, so we can't compete with anyone. All right, now let's proceed to the next lovely English phrase that if you know your business English is awesome, which is this one, to hold your ground, to hold your ground, to hold your ground. What is the meaning of holding your ground? When you hold your ground, you do your best to resist changing your mind, although others disagree with you or oppose you. So, to resist changing your mind about something, although others oppose you or disagree with you. Two examples. If we hold our ground by not listening to our employees, our business will fail. If we hold our ground by not listening to our employees, our business will fail. Which means, if we insist on not changing your opinion on a certain thing, or if we keep disagreeing with our employees on a certain topic, or if we do not try to change our mind about a certain topic, then our business will absolutely fail. The other example, don't expect anything new from him, he just likes to hold his ground. Don't expect anything new from him, he just likes to hold his ground. Don't expect anything new from him. He just likes to hold his ground, which means do not expect anything new from this guy because he just resists changing his mind and doesn't like to change his opinion on certain topics. He just likes to stick to his own opinion and doesn't like to listen to anyone. Let's move on to the next English phrase that if you know your business English is wonderful, which is this one. Not budge an inch. Not budge an inch. Not budge an inch. Not budge an inch. What does it mean when we say someone does not budge an inch or you do not budge an inch? When someone does not budge an inch, they do not do anything to change their opinion about something 
or to change their mind about something, although other people are trying hard to persuade them to do so, it's not appropriate for a manager not to budge an inch all the time. It's not appropriate for a manager not to budge an inch all the time. It's not appropriate for a manager not to budge an inch all the time, which means it is not really appropriate for a manager uh, not to change their opinion all the time about certain things or not to uh, change their mind about certain things, although others, you know, try to encourage them to do so. All right, finally, we're getting to the last phrase of today's video, that if you know your business English is fantastic, which is this one, to up the ante, to up the ante, to up the ante, to up the ante, to up the ante. What does it mean when someone ups the ante? By the way, the word up here is a verb. So, when someone ups the ante, they are doing their best to get the most out of a situation, to make the most of a situation, or to get as much as they can out of a situation by increasing their demands and asking for more things. So, to up the ante. Two examples. We can't sign a contract with you if you keep upping the ante. We can't sign a contract with you if you keep upping the ante. We can't sign a contract with you if you keep upping the ante, which means if you keep increasing your demands and trying to get more out of, you know, uh, out of the situation, we will not be able to sign a contract with you. And the other example, at this stage, we'd better be satisfied with what we have and not up the ante. At this stage, we'd better be satisfied with what we have and not up the ante, which means at this stage, We'd better not do our best to get the most out of the situation or, you know, by asking for more. And we better be satisfied with all that we have. All right, guys, in today's video, you learned 20 English phrases that if you know or learn how to use, your business English is fantastic. Now, what I kindly want you to do is like this video and support on my YouTube channel. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so yet and leave a comment down below. I'll be back soon.